Well, backstage at the uh, Georgia Auditorium is the man that got here early. One of the very few acts that ever gets into Vancouver early. Gene Vincent, how are you? Just fine, sir. How are you? Very good. You're looking quite good. How was the ride up? Kind of uh, a drag? Uh, it was. It was raining all the way, as you know. Uh, the question we always ask, uh, did you have any trouble at the border? I sure did. <laughs> I stayed there about two hours. Two hours, eh? Yes, sir. Well, I had a bet on with a fellow in Vancouver that uh, you would be there just that long because most of the groups are, and he, he took the bet on, and now I'm two bucks to hamburger. You know? <laughs> Hey, uh, your record dance to, the, dance to the Bop, and the other side, I got it on Capitol, is doing real real fine in the Northwest here. Well, thank uh, you, sir. Really yeah, when did you record that? Uh, same time as Lot of Loving. Do you mind if I call you Red? Yeah, it'd be I'm better. Just... Look, I don't want to call you, sir. Right. <laughs> and, uh, uh, well, Red, we cut that uh, same time we did Lot of Loving. Hey, where'd you get your big break? Could you tell us a short story of how the Gene Vincent and the Blue Caps got out to the West Coast and got success? Well, sir, uh... I sent a record out there at first, and uh, Capitol was holding a big contest, and they had 250 entrants. And uh, I was one of the last ones to send mine in. And uh, out of the 250 entrants, there was 243 that were singing Elvis Presley songs. And the song I sent in was named Bebopalooba, and that's the one. I... Of course, the original that made it for you. What did it do, a million and a half, something like that? I went this close up to two million now. It's crazy. Bebopalooba, that was great. Every time we play, we get phone calls, even today, you know, sometimes on our on our Saturday session, which is five hours long, we play, well, half an hour Gene Vincent, and uh, when we play that, we get a lot of phone calls. I sure do appreciate all you've done for me, Red, and I'd like to thank yeah. the public, too. What have you got in the way of records coming up, Gene? That's always a good question yeah. for a jockey to ask a big star. I, uh... I made a record, and the start note went down, you know, yeah. and it would come off, and the start note was like, yeah. And then I was going to put that out this time, but a fellow named Elvis Presley come out with Jailhouse Rock with the <laughs> in front of it, you know. <laughs> so we, we helped that one and put out uh, Dance to the Bop, and the next one will be a, rock call, a song called Rolling Danny. What do you think about rock and roll? Now, you're one of the rock and roll greats. Do you think rock and roll is uh, slipping down? This is a question I have to ask myself all the time because I've been associated with it since it began, too. What do you think? Well, if anybody thinks it's slipping down, you look at the Billboard's top 30. Or Cashbox. <laughs> <laughs> I say Cashbox because uh, we follow that just as close as a, as a regulator. We have our own, of course, too. Cashbox is real, real good. Man. It's, it's a good. I, nice big picture of you in this, uh, in this week. Did you yeah, catch it? Uh, no, I didn't catch it. I call it Billboard. It is in Billboard, too. And, uh, nice big spread they give you there. <laughs> what do you do your uh, your recording down on the Capitol Tower in the in the bottom part there? Yes, Red. Uh -huh. they're, they're all, you know all our studios is underground. Now. How about giving us a lineup of the boys in the band? Uh, well, sir, there's uh, Johnny Meeks plays the lead guitar. Bobby Jones plays the bass. Dude Khan plays the drums. Red, Red, I say Paul Peak on the rhythm. We call him Red. <laughs> gotcha. And uh, uh, Max Liscomb on the piano. That's terrific. And of course, Gene Vincent, you play guitar. What kind of guitar have you got? Gretsch. A Gretsch guitar. That's a good commercial for one of our sponsors. I'll slip in and write about that. <laughs> no, not actually. Um, what I was going to ask you next is, is Gene Vincent your real name? That's a thing I always throw at show business people. My name is Gene Vincent. Your real name is Gene Vincent. Where do you hail from? What part of the United States? Virginia. I was born in Virginia and come from Dallas, Texas. The girls asked me, the girls of the Northwest asked me to ask you how old you are. I'm 20. Are you married? No. You're not married. No. What are the plans? Um, well, you know how this road is. <laughs> You never, you never hardly meet anybody long enough to know them that well. No, you never stay in one spot long enough. That's that's right. Well, I don't know. I always ask this question, too, but, uh, well, you've been on the road now for how long, Gene? Since July the 10th. Since July 10th. It kind of gets and wears on you. I mean, not the audience. I don't mean that, but I mean being on the road all the time. Yeah, well, traveling mostly is what, what wears on you, boy. It gets horrible from that. Do you ever get to uh, get home? Yeah, once in a while. I... <laughs> I've, been, I've been off about eight days since uh, July the 10th. Where does your uh, mom and dad uh, live? Where do they live? Well, they live in Dallas, Texas. Uh, they live in Dallas. Yes, sir. That's a big state there, man. It sure is. <laughs> Gee, I was talking to Buddy Holly of the Crickets right here where we are standing right now about, um, oh, about two weeks ago. No, three weeks ago now. He's from a place called Lubbock. Where's that? That's uh, down south of Dallas. South of Dallas, yes, eh? Sir. What have you got coming out around Christmas time, Gene? Uh, well, sir, we won't have any Christmas albums coming out. We're, uh, we're kind of afraid to do hymns now, because, uh, you know, Elvis done some hymns, yes. so we're, we're scared to do that. By the way, there was an old rumor off the press that you met uh, Elvis Presley in the Knickerbocker Hotel back in 1956, and he said to you, I'll quote the press, and then you can tell me if it's true or not. He said to you, Gene, my mom heard your record, and she thought it was me. Did he say that? That's true. Yes, sir. What happened there, anyway? Uh, well, that was my first record, Be La Palula. Uh, and... Uh, Elvis has been one of the greatest guys I ever known to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
He just helped me along. Did you meet him somewhere, Gene, before oh, you ever I, got oh, into yes. the big show business yes, like you are now? I've known him ever since almost he first came out. How did you bump into him? On road shows yourself? Or well, you... th they brought him into Norfolk. I remember they paid him uh, $53. I'd like in. to see the check for 53 <laughs> bucks for Elvis Presley. It'd be quite the deal, eh? And uh, he came in with Hank Snow. Uh-huh. And uh, that was the first time I ever met him. Well, Hank was a local promoter for Elvis in the beginning, wasn't he? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Well, who'd you say gave you the big start? I mean, you did, or did you manage this whole thing yourself? Well, Capitol Records managed it for me. They, they did? Yeah, they, well, as you know, uh, I spent a lot of time in the hospital with my leg. Yeah. Hey, what happened to your leg? Do you mind if we bring that up, Gene? Well, I broke it riding courier service for the Navy. I was oh. in the Navy, and I was riding courier, and uh, I got run over. Is that right? Yeah. Gee, how long ago where was it that you were in the Navy? Uh, it was two years ago since I broke my leg. I stayed in quite, in quite a bit after that. I've been out about... Uh, just a little after you, I've been out about 13 months. Well, what numbers are you going to do for us tonight? Uh, well, the, f the first two numbers will probably be more or less ordinary rock and roll, and then, uh, I'll ex well, you know, as, as, as you probably know, maybe they don't, but as you probably know, the uh, rock and roll was derived from the old blues records, you know? Yes. So uh, I I'll do a blues song for them about that time, and then I'll carry it through with the show. Sure. What would you say to an up-and-coming youngster who was interested in going into the music business? What would you say uh, to do? I mean, give... You know, give them credit where credit's due, and some of them, some of them feel at times it's not worth it, and they'll never get there. What would you advise them on the road up, Gene? I mean, you you did it yourself. Well, sir, I tell you, people I've heard people sit around and say, "Boy, I wish I had a break." This, that, and the other. You can make your own breaks, because there's no record company today that if you take them a dub record that they won't listen to it, and if it's good, they'll record it. Because after all, they're in the business to make money too. Is that right? And well, more so today, you know, as it was. Back when I first started. Yeah, the, uh, the, younger, the younger group, namely our group. How old are you again, 20? Yes, sir. That makes us both the same age. How about a shake on that? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, anyway, uh, the, the younger people now, they have sort of taken over the record industry. That's you know? true. That's and uh, I, think, uh, I think, like you say, rock and roll is here to stay for a while, right? I think it's here. I think it's going to stay here for an awful long time myself. But say tomorrow, you know how the hit parade charts change. Say tomorrow, uh, things all of a sudden changed over to ballads. You can do ballads, can you? Oh, yes, Red. In my new, in my album that came out, if you... Well, you probably... Yeah, we've got it. Got both of them. Unchained Melody. Yeah, nice. Been? Well, the guitar I work on that is beautiful. If you, get, if you get the right instruments with you, you can do ballads. Well, who would you consider, now that we're talking about guitars, the greatest guitar player in the pop field today? Well, there's been a lot of arguments <laughs> but, uh, between... In between uh, uh, Chet Atkins and... Uh, Sugarfoot Garland. What do you think? I tell you, I think I think Chet Atkins. So do I. I'm with you. I, I like Chet. I like Sugarfoot too. But I think Chet Atkins is is an artist in the true sense, and his music is so original. It really. Uh, is. That's true. He, he, well, it's funny for a guitar to play his own rhythm, and he does. Yeah, it's real. Odd. People can't believe it when I announce it on the air that this is Chet Atkins, and the way he's playing this guitar, it is not done elsewhere, and they can't. They can't believe that there's one man doing all this. What have you got for the future? What have you got hopes for the future? I mean, if this, uh, say it all caved in tomorrow, not that it's going to, but say it did cave in tomorrow, what would you do, Gene? Well, Red, I'm one of the lucky ones that's got something to fall back on in the industry. I've, I've done pretty well, and I've saved my money, and and uh, I've got some things where I can fall back on. you got some things to fall back on, definitely. Have you any occupation that you'd go into if you got out of showbiz? Well, radio. I have I own some interest in... Some radio and uh, I think I... Where do you? Where do you own a radio? Half a radio station uh, recorder. Well, I own uh, own some in Peoria, Illinois. Mm -hmm. And then I own uh, a half of one, not a half of one, but a third of a one in uh, Lubbock. Lubbock, Texas. I was talking to Jimmy Bowen. Apparently, he has some shares too. You ever met Jimmy Bowen on the road? Well, Jimmy Bowen's manager is the same. Manager. Oh no, is that right? And that's how we all got in together. See? That's terrific because I was talking to him and he said, uh, you know, you said, right, I'm only 19 and I've got an ulcer already. <laughs> I look at him, I can understand the whole thing. Yeah. Well, Gene, thanks for taking time out here backstage before the show at the George Auditorium to, to talk to us about your career and everything else. Thank and is you. there anything you'd like to say to the 34,000 members of the Teen Canteen Show? Yes, sir. I'd like to tell them what a fine disc jockey I think you've got. You're a real nice guy. Huh? Thanks. Thanks, Gene. I'm turning red. <laughs> I better go.